I believe that the word cold cases is wrong because it could be perhaps something that's in a drawer somewhere in an office, but their families hasn't forgotten them and they're still looking for them. And I just want to do my best to, to help. When authorities have failed to identify the remains of a body, there is very little hope of closure for these John and Jane Doe's. But every year, an enterprising studio of student artists use their knowledge of the human form to try and breathe life into these cold cases. Here we're doing a forensic reconstruction of a real case, trying to get it as close as he used to look like when he was alive, so we can identify him. We are given a 3D print, not the real skull. We use it as a framework so we can reconstruct the anatomy of the individual. First we start adding the muscles on the framework given by the bone and then we try to complete those things that are not so clear like the ear or the mouth. Right now I'm working on a Caucasian white man between 40 to 60 years old. There are indications that he lost his teeth when he was alive and uh, his bones are telling me all that. These lifelike models are provided to authorities, often reinvigorating investigations and bringing much needed closure to loved ones. After my first experience last year, I was lucky enough that the person was identified and I got this beautiful letter from the family members saying thank you. When we see this process, it feels almost like you're resuscitating someone. But I know that beyond that, where you're resuscitating is the life of those families that are looking for this person. Most people don't think too much about changing the world, but here we do. Right, Joey? Here at Sendaver Labs in Tampa, Florida, we make the world's most sophisticated synthetic human tissues and body parts. Just take a look at Joey here. While he might look like a real boy, he's actually a synthetic cadaver. He's made to breathe, bleed, and act just like a real human. Joey leads an incredibly interesting life. High five, Joey. All of this technology he and his friends are made of allow them to replace cadavers, live animals, and even human patients. A synthetic human takes about three weeks to build from start to finish. They're very difficult to build. There are thousands of parts. If you just look at the job of assembling one, it's staggeringly difficult. It takes six specially trained teams to make Joey. Skeletal, skin, muscles, organs, vasculature, and final assembly. And then there's our tech crew, engineering, electronics, and tooling. Everything that we make has to be stored in, in water when it's not being used because it's made you know, primarily of water, just like uh, every, every living thing. You know, there's always a high demand for real cadavers. The supply is limited. They're getting tougher and tougher to get. And with our synthetic cadavers, uh, what we're really mimicking is live tissue, not, not dead tissue. So the experience you get is more like the experience you would get with a, a live body than a, a dead body. Sendaver technology is definitely improving the way people study medicine, study medical procedures, study medical device development, uh, because it, it makes the whole system better. It allows surgeons to uh, train in procedures that they would not be able to train in without risking a patient. While we'll never know how Joey spends his time after we go home and turn the lights off, we do know that once he moves into his forever home, he'll be training people to save lives. Attaboy, Joey.